Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today's video is on these things, differential probes. All right, just got back from Hawaii. You can see I'm all burnt. So uh, let's get to the video. Thanks guys for watching. Hey guys, I'm gonna be in Hawaii for the weekend, but I'm gonna try to put out this video. And I got some more test equipment because I need some more things. We're gonna cover a bunch of stuff here on the bench. So. Let's see what I got here. Um, hopefully this will work out better than the last piece of equipment I bought. It's really the first one I've been disappointed in. But, um, Mixig DP10013. So some of you guys are going, oh, finally got one of those. Wow. That's pretty cool. I don't know if I I don't know if I was expecting the cool little white box. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> all right, here, let's open this bad boy up. Wow, pretty cool. A warranty card, um, little manual, of course. Oh, it's nicely packed. Nice little USB cord and what is it? It's a differential probe. But yes, I do have one. If I can pull it out of here. So I picked up this Pintech DP25 and someone asked me why I didn't choose this one. So I thought, you know what? I should get them both and that way I can kind of, God, this has a nice feel to it. But this way I can compare them both and it has nice little soft leads. I'll tell you what, one reason I got this one is because all the leads pulled out. So I didn't have to worry about any leads, you know, becoming, you know, damaged or whatever. So these guys have nice little flexible boots. I think that's pretty nice. And this end too, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. But, you know, for photographs you can't really tell. That one just, to me, I thought everything came apart. It looked like it might be made a little better, but... And also it had the X20, X50, and X200, where this one just has X50 and X500. So I thought maybe the ranges on this might be better. But you know what, we'll compare these two, okay? And we'll see how they measure. Um, comes with similar kind of probes. These little long alligator kind of clippy thingy majigs. These big alligator clips. And uh... And just a probe tip with the banana type plug so it'll plug in that's kind of nice too so yeah I like those kind so uh, this other one came with the long leads and the alligators but did not come with these little guys so and it did not come with the nice case so Pretty nice. Anyway, um, let's plug this in, put them side by side, and uh, so it looks like the power port's right here. I can see DC 5 volt in. There's also a little USB connector here. I uh, imagine you can power it by either one. I suppose. Uh, nice little soft rubber, well silicon type. Um, buttons. This one has little knobs. This one is just buttons. So I don't know. Maybe that's nicer. Uh, this is definitely a smaller unit for sure. Um, that's kind of nice. So, all right, cool case too. Um, all right. Let me plug it in, bring the camera over here, and let's look at the signal. All right, guys, so here's a Pentec DP25 set in X20. You've seen this before on the bench if you've seen my videos. And the Mix Sig DP10013, the new one, it's in the X50 position. And it's powered by the USB. This guy's powered by this little wall wart that it came with. This guy actually came with the cord, but no power source. So I'm powering it with this battery. It's a pretty healthy battery. Uh, it's got all LEDs lit, so it's fully charged. 
and we're going to use the, look, the switching power supply to look at. So these probes are the ones coming from the, the Pentec, and these two are from the Mixig, and these two big alligators are the load, the red and blue wire. And if you notice, I twist wires on my bench. I even twist the wires from my multimeter. Um, and I thought it was cool that Mixig actually sent out their manual saying to uh, for best practices twist the wire so I thought that was kind of cool I think that's a good practice to do and if you've watched my bench you've seen me do it so um, hopefully that it, it also helps keep things neat too but you know really it helps uh, keep the signals the high frequency content down and inductance down and stuff like that so here's a switching power supply the output the inputs over here and these twisted wires <laughs> are going to the power supply, okay? So we'll power it up, we'll look at the DC level, and then we'll look at the ripple, and we'll see if there's any difference between th these two probes, all right? And so it'll be a fairly simple, quick test, but it'll just be something that you can see this guy in action. It is very small compared to, to this. They both feel built very well, uh, but I'll tell you what, this mix sig does have a nice fill. It's nice and dense, and I mean, I thought this was nice, uh, but it is it is kind of nice having the compact thing. The U.S. power port on the side is an output USB power, um, so I guess maybe if you have more of these, you can daisy chain them maybe. And I'm and I've got these two guys up here to use both of them to just see if. The voltage here at the output agrees with what's coming out on these guys. All right, so uh, let's go to the scope. Guys, okay, so the scope, I've got the Pintec coming in channel one, and I got the mix sig on channel two. You can see the the coaxes. The mix sig is a nice, small, flexible coax. The Pintec's a little stiffer coax. I do like this. Uh, more flexible guy. Now I don't know which one offers more or better shielding, um, which one performs better, but I would assume that they both are going to be pretty good. Okay, so now here's the signal. Okay, now channel two, it's an X50 position to ma match to make SIG. One meg, AC, full bandwidth, channel one, same stuff all the way across except for this is 20x. Now here let me just separate them. You can kind of tell um, that the noise the just the noise on the mix sig is a little higher, has a little higher noise just sitting here with no, no signal on it. Let me drop it down to 250. Now because this one's 20x and this one's 50x I can't, I, they're not going to have a perfect overlap on every um, level. Now that's 40 millivolts per division, and that's 50. So the 40 from the Pentec is actually a cleaner uh, output signal. Now I, w I wonder if I can hit the bandwidth limit. Now if I hit the bandwidth limit, it helps this guy a little bit. If I do it on channel 1, it helps that guy even, you know, a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to full, just so we're not hiding anything or missing anything. All right, so yeah, uh, channel one, it's about 11 millivolts. Channel three is about 30 millivolts. So yeah, just basic noise content. Let me see, let me disconnect the probes here, just in case it's actually picking up some kind of noise through the through my system. I'll tie them all to ground. Yeah, it looks like it's just um, just noise the uh, pickup. So the mixic might have a little bit more noise, but let's see what happens when we actually get a real signal. I'm gonna turn on the power supply so it's gonna get a little fan noise here. I had the output turned on so the power supply is actually on, the ripple is actually coming out. So here, let me adjust these down. Okay, they're AC coupled. I'll push the buttons to center them. I can get 100 millivolts that's a common output. Now look at that. They overlap pretty, 
this let's push this here I'll freeze it I would say the yellow waveform is a little bit cleaner the blue one again has a little bit more noise floor on it you see the blue how thick it is and yellow is a little bit thinner I'll offset them a little bit yeah, so there's the signals. So I would say that uh, the Pentec is actually just a little bit cleaner signal. Yeah, the Pentec looks just a little bit cleaner than the Mixig. But I think that, I mean, this is 100 millivolts per division, so they, I think they both look really good. By the way, if you look at the measurement, the RMS measurement, 114, 100. I'll, I think every time I stop it, oh, I'm, I think I'm off screen a little bit, so it's having a hard, it's missing some of the data, so it's, yeah, it was having a hard time reading some of that, so I'm off the screen. I'll put them right on top of each other again, just push the buttons in. So it's kind of an equal measurement. So if I stop at 171, 177, 167, 174, I think what's going to happen is it's a little bit random because it's bouncing all over. 120, 133. Let me get a few more waveforms. That might help. Oh, yeah. See, it's got a low frequency. This is high frequency ripple, and this is low frequency ripple. You see that? There's a low frequency modulation on top of the high frequency. I hit auto set by accident. Oh, you know what? I can undo auto set. Okay, uh, let me freeze it. Yeah, the blue waveform here, 141, 135. Okay, you know what? Here, let me go to DC, okay? I, I have an idea. Let's look at the DC voltage. Oh, by the way, while we're reading that 144, let's see what the multimeter. Now, it might be outside the bandwidth of the multimeter, so. All right. Well, now this is interesting. Um, the channel 1's on 4 volts per division. Channel 2's on 5 volts per division. I'm getting uh, 19 volts on channel 1. RMS, channel 2 RMS, I'm getting 19.3. Now, my Tektronik says 19, the TX3 multimeter says 19.22, and the Fluke 189 shows uh, 19.23. Uh, so, this one's only about a tenth off, or a little bit less than a tenth. This one's a couple tenths off, if the multimeters are correct. Okay, that doesn't change anything. And that doesn't change anything. All right. Hey, let's try something else. What I want to do is I'm going to um, capture the rise time of the voltage, okay? So let's see if the rise times look the same. All right, so what I'm going to do is put this on single. And I'm going to put it, well, I'm going to put the time base on 5 milliseconds per division, I think. I don't, I'm not sure how fast it will come up. So let's try that to start with. And I'll get the trigger set right about here. I'm gonna, it's right about here. I'm gonna move the center position over to the left. Whoops. So that way we'll capture it and then we'll see the rise time, okay? All right, so here I'll, I've pulled out the uh, banana plug in my power supply. So I'm gonna put it in and it'll start at the power supply and we'll see what happens. Wow, okay. Now I have to put these in different spots because one's 4 volts, one's 5 volts. So it's a little bit hard to tell to get a really direct comparison, I think. I think, they, I think one thing we can say is they both hit the peak at the same time. 
Um, the scale here, you know, the scale's off, but the timing is the same. So even though the scale's off a little bit, the, the timing occurred at the same time, I, I could say. And then there's these two things here. This was actually fairly slow, so that's not a real, real awesome test or anything like that. Let me try that one more time. Yeah, as far as the timing goes, that they occur at the same time. Waveforms look about the same. You know, I think both these probes are going to be pretty awesome probes. So I don't think there's any problems there. I think whichever one costs less is probably the one to go with. The Mix Sig has an X500 range, so it might actually have a higher range on the top. But all right, well, I'll have to compare the specs for that. Hey guys, what do you think? The uh, the Mix Sig is definitely smaller. Um, this one has a little BNC sticking out the bottom. This one's just permanently connected. And I think that's why, one of the reasons why I chose this guy to begin with is because, I guess really too, it had an X20, I thought maybe it'd have a little bit better accuracy than an X50, which maybe it does. Maybe that's why the noise floor on this one's lower than this guy, this X50. Uh, I don't know. But this did seem like a little no lower noise floor. Um, I don't know if it's a big thing yet. Uh, Maybe as I use these, I'll become more familiar and have more input. But right now, I think they're, I mean, this has nice push buttons. This one has a, you know, rotary dial. It's kind of older fashioned, maybe. Now, it does have the off position, and it goes to X200. Well, this one goes to X500. So, this one definitely seems like the higher range. And, and I wanted lower range stuff, and I like the idea of it disconnecting. So, I think that's why I chose this one to begin with. One thing I'm noticing here is this one has a CE mark. Uh, I don't know if this one does. I don't know if that's a big deal or not. But anyway, um, just trying to see. This one says 1,000 volt inputs. Yeah, this one does too. But no, this one says this one has 1,300 volts across the inputs um, and 1,000 volts to ground or earth ground. This one's 600 volts and 1,000 between inputs. So there's a little difference there, I guess. Um, but yeah, again, this one's meant, I think, for higher ranges. But yeah, the, uh, the, the Pentec is a little bit heavier, a little girthier. But they both have very nice feels to them. They, they both feel very sturdy, very strong. Made in Taiwan. I'm not sure where the mix sigs made, but don't know if that matters. I can't read that on the back of this. Oh, it doesn't say. Anyway, uh, I imagine China. Who knows? But this is Taiwan, if that means anything. But yeah, both very good instruments. Uh, this one has that nice case. That's definitely kind of cool. Now it does not come with the power off button, though. I mean, this has off position, no off. So you have to disconnect this so um, and this one did not come with the little power source it came with the USB but no power source this guy comes with the the um, you know the wall wart and it and it comes with this cable I, I'd say it's a good six feet long seven feet long it's pretty long so that's nice uh, the USB cord that this one came with is probably only about three or four feet long yeah, I'd say about three or four feet long. So, <sighs> all right, guys. Hope you liked it. A thumbs up if you did. Please, uh, you know, subscribe. Um, hit the little bell. Do all that stuff. And hey, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.